before I begin this guide, there's a few things I need to go over. If you don't know me, my name is Sexy Rexy. I'm very well known for being the best Uller player in Smite. I'm not trying to boast or anything like that, I'm not that kind of person, but when it comes to my mechanics on Uller, <laughs> this god is literally my second half, so I want you to know who this god is coming from. So, before you watch this guide, watch my montage versus some of the best 1v1 players in the entire world. It's best that you know that this guide is coming from a person that knows his shit. Alright, you done? Now you know I'm not playing around. This guide is very in-depth, so I encourage you to pause at any point because there's a ton of information. That being said, this guide is meant to show how Uller can be played to his maximum potential, so newer players can learn a hell of a lot from this, but I warn you it might be difficult to understand the further on this video goes. Last thing before we get started, I want to make a little bet with you, alright? If you didn't learn anything from this video, go ahead and leave me a dislike. If you learn anything, just like it. All that out of the way, let's get started. First up, our Uller's abilities. Now it's pretty simple, so this part won't take too long. Uller's passive is when he uses an ability, the ability in the opposite stance is reduced by one second. First up in both stance, Uller's one fires an arrow that hits all targets in its path. It's about 5 meters in width and 70 meters long. Uller's 2 is a physical power buff that lasts 5 seconds. Uller's 3 is an extremely long range circle that hits everything in the target area. It's 15 meters in the circle, but it's about 75 meters in length. Uller's ultimate is actually a passive in each stance. In both stances he's granted attack speed, and next stance he's granted lifesteal. As well as, you know, switching stances and stuff. Also, the uh, the cooldown. It's a bullshit. This shit's at least, like, double that, I swear. In next stance, Uller's 1 is a single target stun with a range of, I'm not kidding, 69 meters. You can test it out for yourself. His 2 gives him a movement speed buff for 5 seconds. Finally, we have his 3, which is a simple jump with an AoE damage in a circle with a radius of about 30 meters. Now, these parts were originally going to be in the tips and tricks, but I thought they were more important to address now. I'll go way more in depth when we hit tips and tricks, but for now, it's more important that you know this. As you can see, when throwing out an auto with zero ping due to being in jungle practice, there is no delay. When I turn after throwing that auto, nothing happens, this is already shot out. Now if I were to do this my axe stance is 1, you can see the second after I click, I still have time to throw the axe in whichever direction I choose. It happens in the bow stance as well, which is not as much. A big reason a lot of new older players struggle is because they don't realize this, and just click with their abilities expecting them to go where they clicked. So it's hell for newer players, but pay attention to this and practice, and once you're good with it, as I'll talk about in tips and tricks, it's crazy good. Now a lot of people actually don't know this, but most jump abilities can actually take damage a few ticks after the jump. So as you can see here, even in midair, I can still take damage. The same effect applies to landing. Almost all jumps can actually take damage in a very, very small window of time before they land. It can be effective with all forms of CC, if timed precisely, and stuns can actually cancel the effect of the jump. Keep in mind this isn't very common and very difficult to do, so I just thought I'd mention it regardless. In the third part of this guide, we'll be going over the different builds you'll have on older. Now, honestly, I build a lot like a Loki. I build ability based, and a lot of people don't like this because it's so risky. Basically, if you suck at hitting your abilities, this build does suck ass, but this guide is for people who want to play Ola to his full potential. So, I'll start by going over the basics of pen items and exactly how much damage they do when built properly. First off, all these demonstrations will be a mirror of level 5, so you can see how they fare versus base protections. We'll start off with just the items themselves, and nothing else. This is a chart showing their individual power in pen. I'll demonstrate them alone from worst to best at this point in the game. As you can see, Beastick and Jotuns do the best here. The reason being is they each have 40 power. Beastick having 20 pen actually almost hits true damage, so... Titans doesn't do as well early game as 33% of 25 base protection is only around 8 pen, and as he has no power with its 15 pen. Now we're going to test these items at level 8. Apollo now has 34 base protections, we're going to see how higher power works with them. So, I'll test it out with a fully stacked trans, which gives 83 power, along with some boots that give 40. So we have a minimum of 123 power without the power from the pen items themselves. As you can see, once again Beatstick shines because it has the highest amount of pure pen early game. Titans is just behind Jotuns with its 30 power instead of 40, but it is 33% of only 34 protections, so it only gives you 11 pen. This early on in the game, even with no power, the 15 pen of Azzy is almost as effective as Titans. Let's see how these items work with all their power versus some protections. With the mean, Paul now has a total of 124 physical protections.
As you can see, Titans obviously does the best here. 33% of 124 protections gives you 41 pen, so percentage-based pen is always the best versus higher protections. The pen of the other three really aren't even comparable, as you can see. The last piece before I go over building itself is high HP. Basically, building ability base will deal the exact same amount of damage as before, only surprise surprise, they have even more health. The main counter to this is Kins. At this point in the game where they have a fully stacked Warlocks, for example we'll go with 15, they'll have a lot more base protections, to the point where Titans is the most effective to go along with Kins. Now, I thought I'd go over this in real time as it'd be easier, because there's a lot of things I need to cover based on what people could build, and what how to counter build, and whether or not you're in conquest, stuff like that, but these are the two items that are always essential. I usually build a, uh, a trans first though. I always rush trans, never go boots first, it's not worth it at all, the damage whatsoever. I like to go, depending on if I'm ahead or not, if I'm really ahead and I'm snowballing, then I always go Jotun's for the cooldown, immediately. Always. All the pen, the damage, base penetration, and then to an Azzy, but it's really, it can depend, right? They could go defense next, so you could go with Titans, or you could choose to go defense as well, and then build the Titans, and then you could finish off with, say, I don't know, you want Lifesteal, you go Azzy, or you could go uh, Bloodforge. Something like that, and you gotta... Keep in mind that they could be magical, they could be physical, so I personally enjoy Genji's Guard actually though. It's 80 magical protections compared to the 60 of Bulwark. There's no passive, which sucks. There's no you know Bulwark passive, but I like the passive of uh, Genji's Guard along with the 10% CDR. It's I personally enjoy the item a lot. But yeah, pretty much that's that's how the build goes. I mean, there's personal preferences, stuff like that. Let's say you don't need as much pen, you could go Bloodforge, swap that out for Azzy late game. Um, if they have HP, you go Kins, double defense. You could go the double defense build would probably, if they had built double defense, this is what I usually build. Oh, shit. And then the defense item, usually. That's the best way to just rip through it if they have double defense, because, you know, Kins just it works in... It's passive is basically it takes the health, so it cuts through protections along with passive of Executioner, and then there's Titans. But yeah, there's a ton of different builds. If they have too much lifesteal, you go beat stick, little simple shit like that. There's no set in stone build that you'd have. There's always counter building, so that's the kind of thing that you always want to watch out for. This, this is the generic items that you usually want to have, though. But remember, things can be mixed up and builds can change, so keep that in mind. But yeah, this is just the basic stuff. I'll go over actives and tips and tricks. Oh shit. Next up, rollers combos. Brace yourself, because this stuff's gonna start getting complicated. This was originally gonna go in tips and tricks, but it'd be more useful to mention it now, so... When throwing out autos, switching from axe to bow stance does not affect your auto attack chain. But going from bow to axe actually has a slight delay, so keep that in mind between your combos. To begin, I'll be going over the basic auto attack cancels. For those who don't actually know what auto attack cancelling is, I'll eventually do a video on it, but basically it's just you're throwing out abilities instantly after your autos, and it has very little delay. If you're in melee range, always remember to throw an auto before the stun. Auto attack cancelling before your 1 in both stance is actually quite situational, as the further they are, the more difficult it is to do. Be careful when auto attack cancelling before the jump, as the jump is actually more instantaneous than most abilities. Fun fact, Lotus 3 is actually instantaneous in each stance, so that means in both stance it doesn't hardly affect your auto attack chain whatsoever as you can see here. Now going on to Oloi's actual combos, there is no actual particular set in stone combo you're always going to be using, it can change in an instant. Your attack speed, lifesteal, the damage, kill potential, stun duration, distance, positioning, active, all that kind of stuff just completely factors in. And there's an infinitely long list of stuff that can change what kind of combo you're going to use. It takes practice, time, and just understanding of when to use what. But I'll go over the generic type of combos you're going to be using. Always keep in mind that your goal is to not waste a single tick of that stun duration. The closer you actually are to the enemy, the more damage you can put out. So, we'll begin with the close range combo. Auto attack cancel before the 1, another auto attack, now switch and use your 3. Although at this point the stun will have worn off, they cannot get out of the 3's range in time. When you're this close, throwing out an auto after your 3 is practically instantaneous, and then just follow up the 1. This is what it looks like at normal speed. It even looks sped up honestly, but trust me, it's not. Once you're quick with this, it's deadly. Next up is a mid-range combo, which is just an auto attack range. Throw out your stun. Remember to switch stances even before it hits, throw out your 3 into an auto attack, finish it off with a 1. Next up is the long range combo, which is just at max range. 
start off by throwing out your stun, quickly switch stances, throw out your 3, and finish it off with a 1. I don't have time to go over every single combo for each point you have in your 1 for stun duration, your attack speed, all that, all that stuff. There's so many factors that can change your combo. What you have to do is practice. Practice until these combos become second nature, and you don't even have to think about what combo you're going to use. Last but not least, tips and tricks. I'm going to go over some tips and tricks for all these abilities. Now with common sense, we know that the closer you are, the quicker things hit your opponents. So when you go to pull off a combo, always be making sure that you're walking towards your enemy, as it makes it easier and quicker to hit autos and abilities. When it comes to hitting your axe, imagine the axe is flowing out of you. When the characters attempt to juke, keep the axe locked in their position, and as it flows out, it becomes a lot easier to follow their movements with the axe, which makes it almost impossible to miss once you're close range. I personally keep restricted camera pitch. I, I find it makes it easier to flick upwards, because I know the distance of my 3 so well. Holo relies heavily on mechanics, so higher ping is really hard to deal with, but not impossible. Hopefully you have a place where your ping kind of, you know, averages out at, so what you should try and aim to do is basically get as used to as possible to your average ping. Having different ping can be difficult to adjust to, so just practice as much as possible with that average ping that you seem to have. This is the basic, aggressive early game play when you're clearing the first wave. So archers actually have less physical protections than the warriors. So once you won the wave and auto a few of the, the warriors, just 3 the archers and then jump on the archers immediately, as he's most likely hiding behind them so that he doesn't get hit by autos. If he even decides to turn back and engage you, your archers are still alive so they will start attacking him. At this point it's really useful to pop off your, your weakening so it counters their med, only if they don't have their jump though. This is the basic melee camp clear, auto the big minion and then immediately 3-1 the wall. Your goal is to pump out as much damage as possible as quickly as possible to the big minion. When starting blue, jump on all the minions and perform your usual combo without the use of your wand. Start to back up so the minions begin to group and kill them all with the wand. Remember, even the combo to the camps changes based on how much damage you have. I've actually made a tier list of what gods I think do the best and do the worst versus Ulr in the dual meta, because most of these gods are just what's played in duel right now. Uh, Scotty and S+, plus, I feel as if she, be, she should be like S+, plus and a half, I think, just because I think Scotty is probably Ulr's biggest counter and she's so strong in general, right? Uh, might actually have moved on her up to here in the new patches, he's gotten just super strong. With Golden Bow out of the way though, I don't know, the meta's gonna shift and stuff like that, but... Certain matchups, they really change everything, like, you're in AMC late game is obviously gonna beat Ulr, but chances of him getting there is just really low, so this is based off of just in general what I think, what gods do the best. Neath is down at the very bottom because her backflip is just, no, it fucks her, right? I consider her to be the worst matchup versus all. Now, there's a lot of actives I have to go, or relics, whatever, I had to go over, so I thought I'd make a little chart um, of what I think are the best actives. And basically, the, the out of 10 portion here just means how often I buy it, and how much I like it personally, and how much I use it on Oler. So we'll start off by Girdle, which is just, it's great for tower pushing, gives you a power spike. I only really buy it if I'm like ridiculously ahead, because it's really not a safe active compared to all these other good ones that you could be getting in a, in a realistic 1v1. Next up is Shield. This, is, this can be used really aggressively and defensively. Surprisingly aggressive if you bait them and stuff like that. If you use it properly, it can be really effective. They've caught me off guard a lot of times. <laughs> I need to get better with shield, honestly. I don't use it enough. Blink, it's really good for engagements and disengagements, but not really worth an active slot on Oler, in my opinion. Um, Med is an all-around fucking great active. It's really safe, great for baiting, you know, all that stuff. It's just all-around a good active. Uh, Sunder. Really good versus a lot of protections, and it's really aggressive. I think I spelled aggressive wrong, did I? I don't know. I don't think so, but... I don't really get it that much, that's why I'm only a 4 to 10. I'm not a big fan of it. Beads are... You know, they're fucking... They're beads. Uh, Aegis damage is a no-no. So, yeah, I, I love Aegis, honestly. It's really good for baiting and stuff like that, getting into sticky situations. Sprint is just as good as Aegis, though, in my opinion. If you really need to get out of somewhere, there's no slows, no anything, you can... It's super safe, you know? Honestly, more safe than Aegis, in my opinion. Versus a uh, low burst. And last but, last, last but not least, we have Weakening. Weakening is the king of first bloods on Older. Like, holy shit. Like, 
I don't know if I, if I showed the uh, the part before about engaging them um, in a way. If you pop off a weakening after you jump on them, and they and they get like med like a normal active when they first start, like it completely counters it. So gods with no mobility like AMC, they just get destroyed by this. I almost always get first blood if the person doesn't have sprint. They're gonna get it eventually, obviously, probably, which is awesome because then they can't beads your uh, your combo, which is just fantastic. In my opinion, Weakening is the best active on Oler, honestly. Now, movement speed is one of the counters to this kind of build that I have, and the reason being is just because it makes it harder to hit the abilities, right? That's why I haven't been playing Oler much in this Golden Bow meta, because everybody can just go Golden Bow, Boots, and Fatalis. That's why Medusa was actually ranked so high on the tier list, because stuff like that. The biggest counter I have to this is just hoping that you can hit it, or if you want, you can switch out one of the items for Fatalis, and kind of go a little bit auto attack base oriented and then engage with an auto attack and then go into your combo. That's the best advice I can give for that. I just thought I'd go over it and mention it because <laughs> it can be really annoying, but that's my best advice for Fatalis. Remember, Uller is basically a long range assassin when played like this. Always be prepared during engagements. Understand everything about your situation. If you both have low health, don't forget, Uller is one of the longest range characters in the game. When leveling the abilities, I start out by maxing my 1 and then my 3. I usually put a point or two into my 2 and my ultimate, just for the uh, passives. Never forget how useful your 2 is. It can be used to close the gap and quickly get closer to your opponent, and it's also great for escaping. Also, don't forget that your 2 is a power spike. It stays in each stance, so try and use it as best as you can. A lot of people have the issue where they throw the axe, and they take a long time to realize that they actually hit it. Always anticipate hitting the enemy. Switch stances even before you hit the axe. That's all the general stuff you need to know when you're playing Oler, but remember, practice makes perfect. The real teacher is yourself. Think about what you could have done better, ask your friends to tell you what you did wrong, or simply watch other people. Like, All these things can make you such a better player, so I really hope you enjoyed this and learned something. This guy took me roughly 80 hours to edit and create, so I, I really hope I won that bet of ours. Anyways, be prepared for this summer, guys. I've got some awesome things coming. Trust me.